Welcome to Separate, Separate bathrooms. bathrooms and other handy marriage tips. This is our final episode for 2020. Did you ever think it was going to happen? My wife. <laughs> what, twenty? the end of 2020 or Basically. the final episode? <laughs> oh, man. Well, yes and no. I mean, my gosh, it's gone fast. It's gone slow. It's the year that was oh. in, a, in so many ways. But look, this podcast is something we started because we really wanted to share our relationship and we really wanted to share information about relationships with ourselves, with yourselves, with your partner, with the kids, with the dogs, your cat maybe, your hamster, I don't know, <laughs> your country, whatever it is. We just thought we'd bring some information in the hope that it might help anyone out there. And we really hope that something we've said or maybe something we've shared has been of some help yeah, across the year. Exactly. Like you, you might go, yeah, that's how not to do it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> As opposed to that is how to do it. But I tell you what, this, this year has been a test for every person for in every the world. Person. In for the, every person. On the globe, person. on the planet. I would say, unless you're the head of Amazon, do you yes. think he's probably gone... What? Wow. Yeah, but his wife took half of it. So not not that it was half of it was half of a huge yeah. amount. I mean, the most amazing amount of money ever. I, but you know, I have to say, being a part time teacher, mm. and I don't know what it's been like in the hospitals. So I I can only speak from first hand about the teachers. Mm. Uh, I my hat is so off to them like it is so off to teachers it, to teachers yes. what uh, often parents have not understood um is how much work went into that time during covid because i know at the school i was teaching at we had kids in the school mm. who were first responder kids and sometimes uh the kids on the spectrum that really needed an environment that had a structure to it. Right. Um, so they were teaching those kids and then they were also teaching all their kids that were at home mm. doing learning from home. So they were doing double duty, still in the same pay. They were marking things till sometimes midnight, one in the morning, creating more um, work for the kids to do at home and yeah. then still working with the kids that were coming to school. They were absolutely exhausted and then they had to do a catch-up when everyone did come back to school yeah. there was this whole catch-up that they needed to do so there's also figuring out zoom oh too. you know zoom. Like, like figuring that out that yeah that, that had some bugs in the beginning and it still sure people did. you know we were all sort of we'll zoom this meeting or we'll zoom this classroom yeah. and it's like oh what's little johnny doing up the back Are you paying attention <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's just amazing they yeah. just did so well and our yeah. kids our kids did well and parents at home did well who had to yes. deal with that sort yes. of thing too yes. so all the way all the way to the end though sweetheart as yeah. well i mean i was just talking about this uh, where a lot of schools didn't have their end of year uh play this year but yeah. they, they ended up putting on a dance instead and videotaping yeah. the dance and sending it off to, to parents to watch yeah. online. Yeah, you know? they've so done just the best they Figuring could. out different ways yeah. to do this and get the kids interacting together and uh, and making something happen that was, uh, I think, will go down as a very special year. Mm. Yeah, there's, there's had to be a lot of outside-the-box thinking. A lot of creativity. Ways. Yeah. And uh, I know in our my business, in, in the entertainment business, a lot of entertainers, well, we lost – Live theatre, lost, yeah. you know, live shows, all that sort of stuff went. So what do you do? You know? Yeah. Instagram became the live theatre, didn't it, it? It did. And I have a huge amount of gratitude for, for Instagram and, and those and the Facebook live platforms and all those sort of things where we could actually go, okay, well, let's create entertainment here yeah. and we'll we'll do it we'll do it this way. Yeah. See how that goes, you know. And and a lot of people have written amazing stuff. Singer songwriters, you know, have written great tunes this year, and yeah, they'll be out performing live. Hopefully, well, they will actually. You know, uh, in in twenty twenty one. I think Taylor Swift just dropped her second album or something, didn't she? In <laughs> this year, it's like, wait, what? You've done two albums? Aside from re-recording all of her original, uh, that's right. Uh, or maybe that's few. what it is. That's, I think that, that's what it is. Yeah, that could be what it is. Yes. Well, we've we've had a. We've had an amazing year in, in the guests that we've had on. You can check those guests out and look back on some of the one the, the incredible people that we had the honor of interviewing. 
Yeah, Georgie Parker, Rob Mills, Georgie Tunney, Joe Griggs and her husband Todd. Yeah. Great information from them. Absolutely. You know. We talked to Holly Wainwright about her book, I Give My Marriage a Year, which you might have bought for someone for Christmas. I don't know. Worth it. Worth it. Yeah, they'll like sure. it. For sure. <laughs> one of the, one of the um, I think probably the biggest podcasts that we did that made the biggest impact for me, mm. which I have put into play, was the I Am Sorry. Learning about the art of apology, that yeah. really shifted for me. If you can find that one, it was it, it honestly it was none of our information. <laughs> Give you it was all um, Brene Brown and this incredible woman she was interviewing, whose name I've completely forgotten. But um, yeah, that was that was a. What really, was it about that? It was just to be able to allow the apology to be simple to be heartfelt and to not add, add but, on. <laughs> but you did this and da, 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 da. And, and, and particularly with the kids, yeah, that yeah. was a huge one to yeah. when a child apologizes to you to just simply take it and not make it a learning lesson. The learning lesson comes later yeah. because you want a child to feel like they can come to you with an apology. Yeah, which from that, I, I have the same thing because from that, if you add on, to an apology that was as much of a reason why kids do not apologize because they see parents apologizing or adults apologizing and using it as a teachable moment and adding on at the end mm-hmm. but now you should do this or you should yeah. do that on the end of it and they just go oh my god because i know as an adult when someone tells me what i should do or shouldn't do or you could have or whatever it's like my i just switch off you know you go should have I go should over someone else mm. you know? so yeah, yeah. I was. That was exactly what I was going to say about that. Is do not add on. You yes. Know, to the to let the apology sit. Yeah. And and be with that. Yeah. So that one that one's really stuck with me. Mm. What mm. we were going to um, also mention because we're we're in a little bit of a itchy scratchy place, the two of us, right? Right now, <laughs> would you say that a little you really bit? You want to bring this? A little bit of agitation. <laughs> I would call it the prickly moment. Yeah, I'm personally yeah. not prickly. I am. I am prickly. <laughs> you are prickly. I have not. And sometimes for three that days. will make me prickly. I have to say, though we're in a we're in a repeat. We actually did it. We actually did a podcast on triggered, and what would you say? Christmas is triggering for yeah, you. Yeah, Christmas sweetheart? is triggering for me, especially mm. pre-Christmas. Mm. Christmas once we get into the into. You know, Christmas Eve and Christmas Day and Boxing Day and all that sort of stuff. I'm I'm good to go. But yeah. it's this it's this prelude to Christmas of buying a tree or you know uh, presents, and I get very irritated. Mm. And I've felt like this for many many <laughs> years. Yeah. Do you um, know why? Well, look, probably. Do I want to divulge? You don't have to. Mm, no, not really. I mean, I can a little bit, but it's been it's been with me for many years, um, and I think it centres around money and what I've learnt about how to get through stuff as a as a grown up. Often, underst- I understand that the patterns that I have difficulty with as an adult probably were set in motion as a kid. So I go back to that and go, what was I exampled as yeah. a kid? And, um, you know, I think I used to watch my dad around Christmas time get pretty stressed. There was there was the grog to buy for Christmas Day, for the big party. There was the presents and there was, there was a lot of talk around money. And then he was winding up his year as well. So there was, there was the end of year cricket match, which seemed to bring more stress than that. Than anything else, you know. So it was. I think growing up, watching watching Dad maneuver his way around Christmas time, it was quite stressful. And then he relaxed, relaxed much in the way that I do. So I guess it's all about making different choices mm. um, in in that moment. Yet I still battle with the idea that oh, we don't have enough money. All this money's going out. I, I you know, because I do all the. I look at all the bank statements coming in and go, Jesus, there's all this money going out. And, I now, do. <laughs> and now it's after pay that just goes yeah, on forever. I know. You know? I know. Oh. I, I, I traditionally, 
Mm. I do the gift buying and then you do the worrying. <laughs> I don't know if that's true, but but yeah, traditionally I'm I'm the I do the bulk of the, the gifts for the kids and my family and Yeah, which is your probably family. not unlike, you know, you the listener. I'm sure you can relate to this because we're, you know, we're not millionaires, you know, we don't have unlimited budgets to spend. And and we have been through, as we've talked about in previous podcasts, we've been through our financial difficulties. And I know that I know that that is also, honey, that's shaped, you know, a lot of that's of that's course. the scars or the, the paper cuts, as we've talked about. Yeah. And, I, and I can just go, oh, oh, there it is again. Oh, my God. You know, and then. Yeah. That's the moment to sit back and go, all right, well, is this true? Am, am I really, are we really going down the gurgler again? Or yeah. no, that's not actually what's happening. Yeah. Yet the feelings arise. So I guess in in um, uh, in the wisdom that I've learned during the year is to speak speak the feelings, you know, put, put words to them and then you can ask yourself if it's true or not. And mm. then from that place, you can work out a way to navigate through them. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, of course it does. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> yeah, Anyway, absolutely. so it is. that's what we've been working through. Yes. And that's, I mean, it's really only just come up recently and you're, gratefully, you were able to put a name to why you were feeling so irritated. Was that a Brene Brown thing? Did she talk about that? Putting a name to your feelings or was that Alexandra Solomon? Oh, look, I think that's a general... I think that's a general one, actually. I think that's a general therapist. I think both of them would, anyone would actually call that as a as a good tool to, you know, what what am I actually feeling? What am I irritated about right yeah. now? So, yeah. and I get, because I get super excited around Christmas. So. <laughs> she, she goes crazy. Our Christmas tree, you <laughs> It's I know. Just, it's just the presents that happen. It just it's like lava coming out of the the corner oh, of the room. It's like this it. the tree just spews. spews and I start I start tinsel. buying in June. So and I forget sometimes I forget what I what I bought and then I bring them out of the hidey hole and I'm like, "Oh, crap. I might have gone over <laughs> Might have. <laughs> I might have gone overboard. And I always try to balance it out with each child who's like, you you get this, this, and this. Okay, that all matches. Yeah. We've got, and you know, sometimes you tuck things away for birthdays. Though, I don't know. It's just something, you know, it's something I've always done yeah. since I can remember. I love to give gifts. And, and, and I get excited when I know it's going to be a gift that that person's going to love. I just get so excited. Yeah. So, well, that's, and that's been the good thing too, is that, that you don't, you don't start sort of November 20, you, you actually do start, as you said, in, uh, in June, July, you start doing Yeah, I tried stuff. to ease, ease the, the, the massive financial chunk at the end of the year as much as I can, but it still seems to happen. We have friends who start, they go to the Boxing Day sales and start buying Christmas presents for next year. That's amazing. Right, they put them away. They hold on to them for a year because they get such good bargains. That's amazing. That's that's some serious forethought. I can't I can't wrap my head around you that. See one. the forethought of hoarding. <laughs> well, maybe it's just clever, clever hoarding. I guess so. I mentioned um, anyway. Look, thanks for bringing that up because I already feel easier just sort of talking about it. Yeah, good. About I'm glad. Of, a level of stress. I'm glad. So let's uh, let's leave that where it is, shall we? Mm-hmm. Alexandra Solomon, she came on the show too, and she talked about change is inevitable, and meet it with curiosity. Mm. That's something that really struck me, is to because okay, we've been through massive changes this year. Yeah, and and yeah, there's that word pivot. Which I That's thought. become a key word of 2020. <laughs> wow. Lean in and pivot. Those two phrases have had oh, a lot. Well, let's unpack this, shall we? Yeah. Let's unpack this lean in while we pivot. <laughs> uh, but that was a good one because as we go through change, you can push it away or you can lean in <laughs> and, and be curious about it. Go, oh, yeah. what is this? What is, what's in here for me? If it's happening for me, not to me, Yeah. Yeah, that's a choice to make. So... Okay, I'm going to choose. It's, this is happening for me, and what is it? What's actually in here for me? So that that was a that was a great one from Alexandra Solomon's 
episode. Yeah. And I think I, I think the beauty of when we all go through a hardship is just seeing the resilience of people. Mm. Yeah, human beings just never cease to amaze me about how people are creative, the kindness that comes from something that when you go through a hardship. Mm. And they're the stories I always look for. Always look for those. What? How did we change for the better how did we make our way through this with kindness and with love and and generosity and there's a million stories out there you know we'll only ever hear one or two of them probably but there's been there's been so so much goodness that has also come during this time and I think that you know that's a positive that we can also we also need to remember yeah, you know. we did a we did an episode around that too, the the good news episode. Yeah, <laughs> we just pulled a bunch of stuff out of the that news of the day. Actually. Yeah, I remember really needing that myself because it was just every day was just bad news. It's so it's so nice to sort of now be reading some good news across the papers. Yeah. You know, now every Australia is just doing touch wood, touch wood is doing so well. The New Zealand bubble. With Australia's opened up, um, you know, so just getting – it just it's that gratitude. It teaches you a lot of, about gratitude, about uh, – we had a friend come up from Melbourne just last week and, of course, they were she was in tight, tight lockdown. Yeah. And she sat there at a, at a restaurant with, with us without a mask on and she just couldn't believe it. She said, I feel like I'm in a different place world right now this feels amazing to me that she got to fly and she got to eat at a restaurant without her mask on and it's just like wow that we would never think of that the gratitude for that and now here we are just appreciating that so much more yes and we well we we had friends who've who came in from the states as well who had two weeks in quarantine and sucked two weeks of air conditioned air in there was no fresh air there was no opening windows where they were where they were being kept so i actually saw someone a mate of mine's daughter flew in from from long island in new york two weeks ago and i saw her this morning her first morning walking along the beach having not breathed fresh air for two weeks Mm. and she was there in the sun the salt air it was i was like how's it going she goes oh my god i'm I'm so grateful to be out. So she, had, you know, a lot of us have this new, these new eyes to, yeah. to look at actually what, what we have and what we normally take for granted. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Something that was really important, I know, for us was to which we which we hope to do a lot more of is we invited the people from clothing the gap to talk about freeing the flag the indigenous flag from the copyright uh that indigenous people currently don't have that's still an ongoing fight so at clothing the gap is an instagram handle if you look that up you can um click on their bio and you can still sign the petition to free the flag so the aboriginal people get to have their flag owned by them and and that includes you know being able to fly the flag 24 7 seven days a week on top of the harbour bridge which Mm. i think is ridiculous that we don't have that or, and, or any other public building for that matter. Absolutely. You know, across the country. Absolutely. And having it permanently in Parliament House. I remember NAIDOC week, they didn't even put the flag up at Parliament House, which was just completely bizarre to me why that did not take place. Though I know... <laughs> I know what you're going to say. Yeah. Go, you finish. Well, go, yeah. Go. <laughs> go. Hearing the yes. Australian anthem. Yes. In the Indigenous language and then in English for the Wallabies game was beautiful. I just, I, I mean, thank goodness for sports, you know. Yeah. I mean, really, having had sports all through lockdown, all through winter, you know, the the footballers just and and turning that on for us to be entertained yeah, by that. Yeah, truly. Yeah. Though also how how sports does 
open the door for so many things and there is, there is a cultural opening right there that yeah. that was so important and yeah. and it's done now so yeah. it's only a matter of just okay let's let's let this thing happen and 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 make it at every event sporting or yeah truly arts, whatever it is i would love to like learn yeah i'd love to learn um the the language the indigenous language of what that would mean for that song or another song. I, I know that there's a lot of talk around some of the language in Advanced Australia Fair that doesn't mm. sit well. Though, you know, we're going in the right direction in yeah. that in that way. And I think um, I remember reading some of the comments in the paper about that that game and about that uh, that um, version of the of the Australian anthem and. There were quite a few people that wrote in and said, oh, my uh, my kid's school's been doing this for a couple of years. I was like, what? That's mm. fantastic. Yeah. That should be just a done deal, you know. It was just – but I was so happy to hear that too. Yeah. And um, I hope that that keeps – you know, Black Lives Matter became a, a, a big topic this year and I hope that we can still keep pushing towards equality on that front well, as well. Because there's so much work to be done. Stay consistent with it. Mm. Keep going. You know, we've opened the gate. Let's keep going. Absolutely. Speaking of things that are perhaps difficult to talk about or politics or things over Christmas lunch. I know we had last Christmas lunch at my house. Oh, I was going to say my our house. house. <laughs> our house with my family is what I meant to say. It was about an hour long argument over climate change, and we have banned that this year. We are we are banning all political talk. Yeah, I believe, politicizing right? anything really. Well, it's uh, it's good to have a good debate. Like I love a good debate. It <laughs> last year's one was just off the charts, though. It just got it was too long. It was too much, and we had kids there, and they were like, "Really?" And I just I couldn't do anymore. I was done after five minutes. Um, but you know, yeah, you got up and left. I did. I, I just I was sitting it was in too between. Much. It was too much. <laughs> and I think you set the bomb. I no, I did not set the you, bomb. Didn't you throw the bomb? Absolutely not. Okay. Absolutely, I would never have done that. Never <laughs> have. <laughs> no, I'm. Because you'll never go. Have done you'll, that. you'll turn around and. To brother-in-law on your side, on well, you see, I'm politicising this, but uh, we have a brother-in-law that that Ali agrees with. They, you share the same political views, yeah. And then there's other folks in the family who don't necessarily have those views. And I, I, every now and again, you will lob something at the one you agree with and go, "Don't, don't you think so, Pete?" And then Pete will go, "Yes," and then the other two jump on that. I don't know. I guess I have to take your word for it, though. <laughs> it's usually Pete that starts it because he loves debating. That right. was that's his favourite thing. So, mm. who's the brother in law on my side? <laughs> <laughs> we gave that one up. <laughs> Sorry, I just Sorry, gave Pete. out names. Um, <laughs> but yeah, there was. We did a podcast about how do you talk to um, people in your family or friends about race, and. That was certainly, again, none of our information, but um, we had uh, expert advice from people who'd written books. And, and I took a lot on from that just to be able to listen, listen to both yeah. sides and to be able to go, understand why you think like that. It's not how I understand it. This is the things that have changed my mind and what I didn't know about. And this has come to my understanding now Yes. Uh, because getting into a stand-up argument is no one's going to listen to either side of the story. So that that I have that in mind for this <laughs> Christmas as well, even though I don't want to do it. Even well, though I Christmas, don't want another. No, Christmas is at our place and I've already laid down the law saying we're not talking about politics uh, or Anything that's going to create what we went through last year. Yeah, there's usually you know, there's global warming or whatever. We're not politicizing yeah. anything. Family dramas do tend to come out at Christmas time. I know quite a few friends that are like, oh, it's it's Christmas is coming and it's a stressful time for families to all get together and yeah. and then some families just go, you know what? Let's keep it separate and yeah. do our own thing and all the more better for it, but. I think most people, most of us just want to be heard. 
So it's that idea what you're saying. Beg your pardon? Most of us want to be heard. <laughs> that was a really oh, bad joke. Oh, oh, oh. That was such a bad that joke. A dad joke right there. <laughs> it was. I like it. I appreciate it. Because you don't normally attempt. do those ones. I know. I so normally rub- date the cheap shots. Like you're rubbing that. off on me. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> but anyway, yeah. So um, not to not to dismiss your thing, but to actually add on to what you said before is that uh, is to listen to what the person has to say. I love the one where you say, um, "Can you can you just repeat that to me so that I can understand you better?" Yeah. What did you just say? Yeah. Okay, because I, I I don't think I heard you right. And then you have them repeat it and then you can, that to me in doing that gives me time to respond rather than react, mm. to take a, 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 a moment, a yeah. breath and go, all right, count to 10 yeah. <laughs> and listen. And then, so I'm not reacting. And I, and if I feel my, you know, goosebumps going up or tingling skin or mm. feet going numb because I'm about to blow my head off, mm. you know, it's like, nah, just just relax and respond and and it's also it like a, like I did in removing myself last christmas that's mm. totally fine too and i was so happy to remove myself <laughs> and go talk to my mum in the kitchen and we had a lovely chat and i was fine <laughs> well it all carried on outside oh, so boy, did it you just do what you do yeah. to make yourself peaceful and calm this christmas yeah. now speaking of listening cam and i were saying how much we wanted to Really, really appreciate all of you who have listened to any of our podcasts, whether it be mm. at one or every single one. Yeah. Um, we often talk about how important every single listener is and every single comment we get. And just we're quite amazed that here we are, 58 episodes down the track, still going and people are still tuning in every now and yeah. again. So, look, we just can't thank you enough for for being um giving us your time yeah being part of the separate bathrooms family yeah it's it's been really special and giving us ideas about what to talk about and knowing that it's you know we've had some lovely comments about how some things have really helped people and it's been incredibly incredibly delightful to hear that feedback about a little a little idea that's grown into something kind of big yeah for us anyway well said honey yeah yeah we're we're really appreciative and grateful for for all of it even even the prickly moments yes that have happened as well yes, so yeah. we'll be back in 2021 and uh we've got a few ideas coming up we'll be back in around february march and uh with a new season of separate bathrooms another we might change the title a bit we might do another relationship tips or something mm. we'll see how we go yeah we'll but, see um, what happens. we are wishing you from our family to your family have a safe Happy Christmas. May you all have 100% health and abundance and lots of love and good times over the coming months. Absolutely. Weeks. And mm. here's to a, a better 2021 <laughs> for us all. So thank you again and uh, happy Christmas, merry holidays, <laughs> wonderful new year. <laughs> Let's go get merry. Happy honey. Easter. <laughs> Hanukkah. Yeah. Happy Hanukkah. Yeah. Kwanzaa, Kwanzaa. Yeah. Everywhere, everything, Diwali, whatever it is that you celebrate. Uh, thanks again. See you in 2021. Bye.